In my community, we're taught to survive. You know, I spent a whole lifetime saying, why me, why me? And then it all hit, this is why, because I was going to be used like to build a platform so people can get some help. And when you think about here in Chicago, it's such a divide when it comes to having the resources, which is why we took a risk. We'll open up this amazing coffee shop so we can say we're going to step out and we're going to pay for people to get some help because healing is a marathon. You know, for a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. This series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. We want to normalize talking about hard stuff so we can be on the road to heal. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair. Christopher Lamarck cares for his Chicago community as he knows firsthand how it feels to not be cared for. I was abandoned and abused for a span of 12 years. Essentially like the first 30 years of my life was super traumatic. And I dealt with a lot of complications, physical, mental and emotional abuse, high levels of rejection. And so I carried all of that. I spent a lot of years uh, being extremely lonely. But you made it out. Yeah, I definitely made it out and I'm super Proud of that. And that's why I say healing is a marathon, man. You can't rush this. In October 2018, Christopher experienced what he calls a breakdown at a coffee shop. And I just started crying uncontrollably. I just couldn't stop. And so I went to therapy. After some challenging sessions, uh, my therapist set up in his seat and he said, it wasn't your fault that you were abused. And now for the first time I heard it because I had been feeling like it was my fault, right? Because that's what happens. It's so much shame that comes with being abused. As Christopher worked to heal his own trauma, he felt called to help others do the same. I went home one day and I wrote down three words. I wrote down coffee because of the mental and emotional breakdown happened inside of a coffee shop. And then hip hop. Hip hop saved my life from committing suicide. I always had a chance to write. It was my first form of therapy. And mental health, because in my community, we're taught to survive. And we wasn't talking about it, so I wanted to normalize this conversation. And with that, the nonprofit organization Coffee, Hip Hop, and Mental Health was born. What's on your menu? You've got some funky coffee names? Yes, so we got the uh, Beehive, which is a honey lavender latte. Pay homage, uh, like to Beyonce. And then yep. we have the, the, the uh, Diddy, which is a cold brew with uh, a shot of espresso and some butter pecan. Yep. <laughs> so I love it, I love Queen, it. <laughs> absolutely, and the Queen Latifah Chai. So, so many things to pay homage to the incredible artists that uh, do this hip hop thing. Can I get a little side of warm meek milk in my Diddy? You know what, you absolutely can. Do you want oat or do you want uh, <laughs> You want all, man. Let me know. <laughs> I love it, man. But at this coffee shop, every hip-hop-inspired drink goes to free therapy sessions for individuals in need. Knowing, Chris, what you know now, that you had to deal with it. You had been holding all this emotional PTSD baggage since you were a kid, and now you, you know the importance of dealing with it. How do you help other people in the community deal with their stuff? Number one, we start like creating safe spaces for people to talk about their stuff without bias, consequences, or judgment. And also they can't afford it. So right. we said, what we're gonna do is sell coffee and merchandise, and we're gonna see if we can pay for 250 people to go to therapy. Individuals like Chicago public school teacher, Faith Overall. If I had to pay out of pocket, chances where I was just gonna have to skip out on therapy. Right. So if we have to choose between what's going to provide a roof over our head and what's going to um, help us to navigate life, uh, we're kind of conditioned to provide the roof over our heads instead. Um, and so having access to free therapy gave me the opportunity to actually um, get to what I needed to get to. Being an educator, um, I think that you can talk to anyone and they have a story about a teacher that that harmed them. And chances are that's because that teacher themselves was unhealed. So if I heal myself, I have the opportunity to heal my students. Why do you think it's so difficult to break the stigma of, of normalizing therapy and communicating and talking about your issues in certain areas? Why is it so hard? So when we think about going therapy, it's almost like an uncomfortable thing. Why are you going to therapy? What's wrong with you? 
Because we share that language, that misinformation, not having a proper understanding, people are afraid to be ultimately vulnerable. I want to tell people that it's probably one of the most beautiful things you can do for yourself and it's actually very strong to be vulnerable, to own your emotions. And with Christopher's help, this community is starting to do just that. And what's been the reaction from the people, from a couple hundred people that have gotten free therapy that never had it? What are they, what are they saying to you, um, you know, when, when they walk in the coffee shop? Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, man, this is amazing. I wish I had this. Uh, people don't come in just for a cup of coffee. They come in because of the therapeutic transaction. The space is filled with uh, tranquility and peace and love. People want to be seen. And we tell our staff, make sure you love on them. And that's the issue. A lot of people are not seen. And we right. give them opportunity right. for a single moment to be heard and to be seen. I tell people all the time, healing is the new cool. That is the new cool. And we just have to keep saying that over and over again. And that's how you re-change the narrative.